another great section of this uh, great tutorial class. Uh, this is the best academy. And today we want to look at chain rule in the presentation calculus. How to use chain rule in the presentation calculus. And that's question 1 to 5. Each the aspect we want to look at now is when you have a portion of x raised to a power. That's what we want to look at. So we want to look at. And I have two ways to give to you guys. One of them is shorter. Both of them apply chain rule, but one is more shorter than the other. So let us go straight to this question one. But ensure, ensure you subscribe to the channel. It's very important. And share the video. Then like, comment. Any question you have, put it in our comment section. Share the video to others. It's very important. It's very, very important. So let's do that. Let me just go straight to this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is look at how you run trade chain rule. How you run chain rule. If y is equal to 3x plus 4, plus 1 is power 4. Now, if you want to say inside the bracket, let's use a let statement to represent inside the bracket. Use something to represent inside the bracket because what we have inside the bracket is another function of x. You have two functions that is being joined together in which both of them cannot be separated from each other. From each other. So what you do? Let me ask you number five. Let's say now t for y is equal to tan 5x. So you know the event is this and this. That question only five now, so let's go at it. Although I'm going to dash everything through using some special and lovely shortcuts. So let me walk on through and come from this place, come from this end, so that we know that we're working with your textbook as well. So if I was to let something, you want to use you, represent anything inside the bracket, which is 3x plus 1. Let's represent that. Such that the question itself will be now, will now be equal to u raised power 4. Now, let's differentiate this one right to u. The one about the u will be, the one about the u will be equal to, for anything this, we're going to have 4 u, we're going to have 4 times u, then, then 4 minus 1 times 3. How do you differentiate the polymer for sure? You do it that way. Then, you also differentiate this u. u is equal to 3x plus 1. The u over the x will be the rest of 3 x will have 3. The rest of 1 will have 0. So that will be the answer to that. That will be the answer to that. Therefore, from chain rule. Now, chain rule means all the differential coefficients you have inside your work, you multiply them together. Multiply them together. So you have to be having the y over the x will be equal to the y over the u times the other one is the u over the x. If you still have another one, is actually Except this two, just multiply with it. That is what we call chain rule. Then we'll be having 4 u raised power 3 times 3. 4 times 3, what is that one? That is 12 u raised power 3. You can also say this is equal to 12. Now, what is u? u means 3x plus 1. So we present that by 3x plus 1. Then everything raised power what? 3. And the final answer. So the first thing, let everything here be equal to u. So that the question will be u raised power. This power is there. Then the next, you differentiate this u, differentiate uh, this y's power u. That guy is y is equal to u raised power 4, which is 4 times u, 4 minus 1, using polynomial function. Then differentiating this other one using the same polynomial function. So I mean, you have 3s, you have 3, you have 1, you have 0. Then the next, multiply this to the y over the u times the u over the s from chain rule. So you're going to have this. 4 times 3, you have 12. u is power 3. And then, next, what is u? You bring it back and you have the final answer. Then, here is the second question. We can also use this approach that I'm about to develop now. But then, from this relation, we can see dy over the x will be equal to n times the f prime of x. Then, multiply the question itself. Then, n minus 1. What do you do? Use n to multiply when you differentiate inside the bracket. You have this. Use n to multiply when you differentiate inside the bracket. Remember, I have prime. Use n to multiply when you differentiate inside the bracket. You have this. Then repeat the question and remove one from the power. I explain again. You use this power to multiply when you differentiate inside the bracket. You have this. Then repeat the question again and remove one from the power. Now, apply this. 
the one who has the direct will be able to use this power to multiply when you differentiate inside the bracket. Now, differentiating 6x squared, we're going to have 12x plus differentiating 3x, we're going to have 3. Differentiating 8, we're going to have 0. Then, repeat the question. Repeat the question and remove 1 from the power. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the rule. Next, first thing, use the power to multiply when you differentiate inside the bracket. The next, repeat the question and remove 1 from the power. That's what this uh, uh, formula is saying. Then, the next thing you're going to have will be 3, bracket 12x plus 3. That's 12x plus 3. Then, times 6x squared plus 3x plus 3 raised power 2. So, we need to to that. Simple as same thing. Let's apply that for this. So, we can also say y is equal to sine x, everything is part 3. I'm going to do this way. I'm going to do this way. This and this are the same thing. Both of them are the same thing. So, the next thing, remember, the first thing you do, the work about this will be use the power to multiply when differentiate inside the bracket. Use the power to multiply when differentiate inside the bracket. The relating inside this bracket, the relating inside this, you're going to have cos x. Then repeat the question and remove 1 from the power. Super as simple. Simple as that. So that you'll be having 3 cos x, then sine x is power 2. I'll give you 3 cos x sine square x. Answer. I will answer that. It's a very short, it's a very sweet method. That is a very sweet method. So let's look at this from this end. From this end now, let's look at this. So this can also be equal to sin x every to the power 5. This can also be y equal to tan x. Every three is power five. Same thing. Yeah. Now, if you have something like this now, you'll be tan five. There's no tan s to five. Now, if you have something like this now, it means sine cube x, not sine s cube. You take note of that. Then you'll be having the work by the s will be equal to the power, which is five, multiplying the differential coefficient of the bracket. You will just tan s. You're going to have sec square x. You're going to have sec what? Sec square x. Then repeating the question, which is standard x, then remove 1 from the power. So that we have 5 sec square x sin 4x. That means answer that. That means the answer to that. Then let's do this. Lastly, the y by the s will be equal to. That will be equal to. Now, look at this. If you want to solve this, this is different from this. Uh, I want to do that. I just want to show you this example. Right? But this one is tan raised power 5. This one is just tan 5x. I want to solve this one now. Don't differentiate this 5x. What do you have? 5. Differentiate tan. You have what? 6 squared. Then you repeat the 5x now. I'll be down to that. Remember, we did this before when we did trick question. Something like that before when we did trick question. So this one is just a one trick question we did. But this one is main chain rule. And then you use the, uh, this formula, which is something like the direct derivative of 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 the you resolve every everything. So please make sure you subscribe and uh, I see you guys in our next class. God bless you.